Bonjour, mesdames. Bonjour, messieurs. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to this beautiful amphitheatre for our Art and Epilepsy Conference. I would like to extend my warmest thanks to the Communications Department of the Geneva University Faculty of Medicine for their precious assistance in helping us with publicity and the posters for this conference performance. Our project goal is to bring epilepsy out of the shadows and fight the prejudice that people suffering from this disease so often encounter. I would like to begin by sharing some information on epilepsy with you before presenting this morning's performance. I would like to begin by asking how many people in the world suffer from this disease. Epilepsy is more common than we realize. It affects approximately one out of every 100 persons worldwide. That is to say, more than 50 million people. There are 60,000 epilepsy sufferers in Switzerland, 500,000 in France. Epilepsy is one of the most common neurological diseases. As this chart shows, epilepsy usually begins within the first 20 years of life or after 60 years of age. Epilepsy for the elderly group often results from brain damage, for instance, following a stroke. What causes epilepsy? There are two main categories, genetic and brain damage. Those who suffer from genetic epilepsy inherit a combination of genes from their parents at the time of conception, which makes them prone to the disease. It is not a transmission of the disease from parent to child, but rather the parents possess a group of genes, the combination of which predisposes the child to epileptic seizure. Donc une prédisposition à faire des crises épileptiques. Ces épilepsies d'origine genetic epilepsy usually begins during childhood or at adolescence. The initial seizure may occur under specific circumstances, such as staying awake all night or having had little sleep. The second cause of epilepsy is brain damage, either damage already present at birth, known as congenital lesion, or damage which occurs during one's lifetime, such as serious cranial trauma, a stroke, a tumor, or an infection. Epilepsy may manifest itself several months or even several years after damage occurs. Why do epileptic seizures only occur at certain times? Those who suffer from epilepsy, who are prone to having seizures, experience them when what we call facilitating factors arise. Such factors may trigger a seizure. Some of these are lack of sleep, forgetting to take one or several anti-epileptic drugs, which can induce a rebound effect, taking certain drugs which increase the risk of seizure, such as antibiotics, flashing lights, and some patients have their own facilitating factors, such as stress, emotion, even positive emotion, noise, or certain music. Flashing lights worry people because they are such a part of our daily lives. Television, for example, video games, strobe lights. But it is important to be aware that such stimuli cannot make a person epileptic who is not already prone to the disease. And only a small group of people with epilepsy are susceptible to flashing lights. This diagram shows that a biological predisposition and a triggering factor are necessary for seizures to occur. 
et d'un facteur déclenchant. We can see the proportional role predisposing and triggering factors play in bringing them about. The less susceptibility to the disease there is, the more the triggering factor is important. And vice versa, the more susceptibility there is, the less the triggering factor is necessary for seizure to happen. Where there is no predisposing factor, a powerful triggering factor can bring on a seizure. An important lack of sodium, of salt in the blood, caused by certain pathologies, or the use of certain drugs, for example. A radical drop in blood sugar, resulting from anti-diabetic drug use. Exposure to certain neurotoxins. Or a sudden withdrawal from the use of strong doses of benzodiazepines could provoke a seizure in almost anyone. In such cases, the triggering factor alone explains the seizure without requiring an underlying predisposing factor. We would not speak of epileptic disease in such cases, but of seizures being provoked. In the opposite case, powerful predisposing factors create spontaneous seizures without a triggering factor. It must be understood that any harm to the brain can cause seizure in anyone, no matter their age. It is the brain's way of reacting. Here we can draw a parallel to the lung. Just as harm to the brain can cause epileptic seizure, bronchial irritation from allergy, infection, congenital disease, tumors, etc., can cause coughing. Coughing may also have multiple causes with or without a predisposing factor, such as an underlying lung disease. What is an epileptic seizure? This is a top-to-bottom frontal view of the brain. This is the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. Brain cells, also known as neurons, are mainly situated in the outermost part of the brain that we call the cortex, here in the dark grey areas. Inhibitory chemical substances, GABA in particular, and excitatory chemical substances, especially glutamate, allow well-balanced activity between neurons. When we do something, when we move, for example, a number of neurons briefly interact in a specific region of the brain. Then another group of neurons interacts, and so forth, and so on. The excitatory and inhibitory systems of a person suffering from epilepsy are out of balance. The dominating excitatory system makes the neurons hyper-excitable, with a tendency to discharge spontaneously in a prolonged, synchronous way. Numerous neurons may be simultaneously activated, which may result in seizure. The excitatory and inhibitory chemical substances influence the transmission of electrical activity between neurons. This activity is recorded during the electroencephalogram using electrodes placed on the scalp and a conductive paste. However, a scalp electroencephalogram may be normal between seizures. An epileptic seizure is the result of numerous abnormally active neurons simultaneously discharging in a more or less extended area of the brain. It is a kind of electrical headstorm. It is sudden and transient. 
An elusive chemical process in the brain will generally end a seizure within a few minutes' time. Seizures begin and end suddenly. They last from a few seconds to a few minutes. Symptoms depend on the area in the brain where the discharge takes place. Here we have a profile view of the left hemisphere showing a discharge in the temporal lobe highlighted in yellow. Such a discharge could produce a feeling of déjà vu. However, this does not mean that all déjà vu experiences are epileptic in origin. Many of us have experienced déjà vu at least once. There are not one, but many epilepsies. Multiple forms of the disease exist. When both hemispheres of the brain are instantaneously affected by neuronal hyperactivity, what we call generalized seizures occur. They can produce a state of absence, known as petit mal, wherein children lose contact with their surroundings for a few seconds, dozens of times a day. Or, tonic-clonic seizure, known as grand mal, which is the rather impressive form of seizure we normally think of when talking about epilepsy. This tonic-clonic seizure brings on loss of consciousness, body stiffness, and jerking movements followed by a more or less 20-minute period of confusion. When neuronal hyperactivity affects only one area of the brain, we refer to the seizures as being partial or focal. In simple focal seizures, symptoms arise while the patient is still conscious. What we call the aura consists of subjective symptoms felt only by the patient and often not perceived by others. The aura is actually how people with epilepsy describe their experience during seizure. Symptoms depend on the area of the brain where the discharge occurs occurs and vary in accordance with the affected area. If, for example, the discharge occurs in the part of the brain that controls motor function, the seizure will produce certain movement-related symptoms. If it occurs in the part of the brain that influences sensation, then there will be sensory symptoms such as tingling, numbness, etc. And if it occurs in the vision control area, there will be vision-related symptoms. The normal function of the affected area is abnormally and highly accelerated. For example, here we might see jerking movements of a limb or part of the face, here pushing pulling movements of the arms, legs and pelvic area. Here a thought may repeat itself over and over again, anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes. Here in the sensory cortex, one might experience a pins and needles sensation in a limb or one side of the body. And in this back area, Area, visual symptoms. Here in the temporal lobe, there might be feelings of déjà vu or powerful feelings of fear rising from the pit of the stomach for no reason at all. If the discharge occurs a little more to the side, auditory hallucinations may occur, and so forth and so on. There exists an almost infinite variety of symptoms related to epileptic seizure. In contrast to simple focal seizure, with complex focal seizure, there is a change in consciousness, a lack of contact. Patients may experience verbal automatism, such as repeating a phrase over and over, or gestural automatisms, such as repeating a small movement like touching one's clothes, or they may also wander about aimlessly. A seizure is a dynamic process. Here we see that a focal seizure may evolve differently depending on the way the discharge spreads through the brain. The patient may be in a normal state of consciousness when symptoms first appear before a change in consciousness occurs. This may eventually be followed by convulsions if the discharge affects the entire brain. In other cases, seizures may start off with a change in the state of consciousness and sometimes lead to convulsions. The consequences of epilepsy are variable. 
The majority of people suffering from the disease live normal lives between seizures. The severity of the disease is cause-related. Epilepsies can be benign or extremely serious, depending on underlying causes. Seizure frequency varies from one person to another. Some people experience a seizure only once every few years, while in extreme cases, patients experience numerous seizures every day. But there is also an epilepsy-related impairment that surpasses the simple number of seizures. En effet, un facteur particulier du handicap lié à l'épilepsie est que seizure occurrence is unpredictable. This unpredictability imposes certain constraints on a person's activities, such as driving cars or participating in certain sports. The unpredictable aspect of seizure is just as crippling as its frequency. Can epilepsy be healed? Certain forms of epilepsy, particularly those affecting children, may heal with time and disappear as adolescence approaches. These are generally genetic forms which are not related to brain damage. However, although some forms of epilepsy may persist throughout one's life, the number of seizures can be reduced with proper treatment. Epilepsy requires drug treatment. Drugs cannot heal epilepsy, but can prevent seizures. And therefore, such treatment must never be interrupted. Although a large selection of anti-epileptic drugs exists, 20 to 30 percent of those suffering from the disease have drug-resistant epilepsy and will continue to have seizures. In such cases, epilepsy surgery might be an option. A pre-surgical evaluation is required to locate the precise area of the brain where the epilepsy originates and ensure that the zone to be removed is not an essential functional center of the brain, such as the motor, sensory, visual or language center. I've now finished with the exclusively scientific part of the program. I hope that it has helped you better understand what epilepsy really is. Now we come to the performance. The idea behind the performance was that it would be beneficial for people with epilepsy to understand that many well-known people have suffered the same disease. This might help lessen its impact on their lives and enable them to feel less unique. Many well-known, often brilliant personalities have had epilepsy, be they in the realm of philosophy, religion, politics, literature, or the fine arts. Here you see a number of them. It can be said that epilepsy does not hinder genius. The simple fact that some of the most talented creators in history have had the disease brings us to question whether or not it played a role in their creativity. Some scientists suggest that abnormal, epilepsy-related brain activity may do just that. Allow me to explain. The two hemispheres of our brain have different functions. To simplify things, we can say that the left hemisphere is the hemisphere of analysis, logic and reason and that the right hemisphere is the hemisphere of intuition, creativity and the arts. The two hemispheres interact harmoniously in the normal brain. However, if one side functions improperly, for example in the case of brain damage-related epilepsy, a particular function of the opposite hemisphere might be enhanced. But this is merely hypothesis. 
Another explanation for the possible link between epilepsy and creativity is that the difficult personal and social life experience of people with the disease or their experience during certain forms of focal seizure might open the mind to new ideas and enrich their creativity. In certain rare forms of epilepsy, for example, patients hear extremely elaborate music during seizure. In his book, Musicophilia, New York neurologist Oliver Sacks writes about a musician who would hear very precise, rather charming music, different from what he knew and composed. Such musical auras inspired compositions in which he endeavored to reproduce the same melodic quality. An anecdote concerning Robert Schumann is that he also had musical hallucinations. They weren't epilepsy-related, but resulted from his bipolar condition. He said that these hallucinations were extremely beautiful, perfectly constructed passages which he used to nourish his creativity while composing. A number of renowned creative artists who suffered epilepsy wrote about their experience during seizure and of the disease in general. Thanks to their writing talents and their desire to describe their seizures in a precise, fearless, candid way, they offer us subtle, detailed information. We have chosen excerpts of letters from Flaubert and Van Gogh, as well as from Dostoevsky's novel, The Idiot, in which the great Russian author applies his personal experience of epileptic seizure to the book's main character, Prince Mishkin. Dostoevsky, Flaubert and Van Gogh all lived during the 19th century. Allow me to remind you of a few of Dostoevsky's major works. The Idiot, The Possessed and The Brothers Karamazov. Among Flaubert's works are Madame Bovary and Sentimental Education. Although Dostoevsky's and Flaubert's epilepsy was probably situated in more or less the same area of the brain, the temporal lobe, their seizures were totally different in nature. Dostoevsky experienced intense joy, even ecstasy, during his auras. He felt fulfilled, as if he were in a state of complete understanding of the world. And he felt that such moments surpassed people's ordinary experience. But for Flaubert, the aura created a whirlwind of ideas and images swirling about and crashing into each other in his brain. It was a very disturbing experience for him, as you will discover later on in the program. Although Van Gogh is one of today's best-known artists, he had little success during his lifetime. He suffered unbearable visual and auditory hallucinations during his seizures. In his correspondence with his brother, he mentions his fear of his seizures coming back and of their unpredictable nature. He speaks of his commitment to his work as a means of fighting the disease. Here is an excerpt from one of his letters. Disease exists to remind us that we are not made of wood. This seems to me to be its good side. He suggests that illness might make us more aware of our feelings, our emotions, and perhaps this can enrich our creativity. During the performance you will now see, Alain Carré will be reading texts from Dostoevsky, Flaubert and Van Gogh. François-René Duchable du will interpret musical compositions he has chosen specifically for their emotional content in relationship to the texts. 
Je vous remercie de votre attention. I would like to thank you for coming today and I hope that you will enjoy the show. But it is much more complicated when dealing with questions of society, family and bias.